Before watching this video, please subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon for more interesting updates on civil engineering topics. Thank you. In this video lecture, I will explain you complete details about the types of foundation which is exist in civil engineering as well as the specifications which is considered before designing the foundation. So firstly, I will explain you the definition regarding the foundation. Then after that, I will explain you what are the different types of the foundations which is existing in civil engineering. Then finally, we will discuss about specifications which we need to consider before designing as per IS Codal Provision Standard System. So firstly, foundation, it is a substructure whose function is to receive the load from the superstructure. And basically, it is the basic function of the foundation which is need to receive the load from the superstructure and again, it, will, it is need to transfer that particular load to the soil. So there are two types of the foundations which is exist in civil engineering, so which are comes under uh, shallow foundation as well as the deep foundation okay so depending upon the depth of the foundation as well as the width of the foundation these are the two types of the foundations so firstly i will show you the some examples regarding the uh, shallow foundations then after that i will show you the example regarding the deep foundation so if you consider the shallow foundation we will consider the depth as well as the width if the depth of the foundation is less than width of the foundation then we will consider it as shallow foundation so shallow foundations are uh, much less depth when you compare with the deep foundation. So basically the shallow foundation which is consisting of some examples here which is related to isolated footing, strip footing, strap footing, combined footing and raft footing. So these are the basic five examples regarding the shallow foundation. So uh, the depth of the foundation should be less than the width of the foundation. This is the basic uh, example regarding the shallow foundation. Now I will show you the examples uh, pictures which is regarding this uh, isolated footing. Uh, strap footing, uh, strip footing and combined footing as well as the raft footing. So firstly I will show you the uh, image which is comes under your isolated footing. Now we can see this is the isolated footing. So the isolated footing will be consisting of different shapes like rectangular shape or square shape or circular shape or step foot shape. Uh, depending upon our requirement we will consider the shallow, uh, isolated footing. Okay, this is the first type in shallow foundation. This is the basic foundation we will consider. This type of the foundation we will consider for uh, transferring the load which is less than the remaining cases. We will consider this respected foundation if your building is having less amount of the load transfer case. So this is the uh, isolated footing. So this is the column vertical section as well as this is the footing which is considered and these are the reinforcement details which is involved in this isolated footing. This is the strip footing. So we will consider the uh, width B and this is the B strip width and this is the load which is applied in vertical direction which is of Q in kilonewton per meter. In strip footing we will transfer the load in kilonewton per meter uniformly distributed load. So uh, when you come to this particular uh, isolated footing we will transfer the load as a point load. But in this case we will consider it as a uh, uniformly distributed load. So this is a strip we will provide along the uh, footing. So this is a strip footing which is comes under the uh, shallow foundation. So the next one is uh, strap footing. So this is also one of the uh, important foundation we will consider in shallow foundation. So this is the first column let us consider this is the second column. So in between these uh, two foundation we will provide one beam here like this. So this is called strap footing. So this kind of the strap footing will be provided if the loading transfer for the two of these columns is exceeding our requirement. So if your requirement is uh, less and the loading transfer will be more in order to transfer the load in proper distribution system we will provide this uh, strap okay so this is a strap footing example diagram now i will show you the combined footing diagram so this is the combined footing so in this case we will consider the two columns first column this is and this is the second column so for this two columns we will provide you one single foundation uh, so a single foundation here like this okay now you can see this is a single foundation we are provided here for the particular section the loading transfer will be uniform for this uh, case also depending upon your requirement if the loading transfer will be more we will adopt this method okay so next foundation will be of raft foundation so basically we will consider this respective raft foundation if the uh, all the uh, area of the columns which is greater than 50 percent of your footing okay so for example let us consider just i am considering this column first column if i want to construct a footing I was taking the footing here like this if I consider. So again if you want to take the fo uh, footing for the second column then I need to take the foundation here like this. So now we can see there is a overlap in between this uh, foundation. Again if you take this then it will be consisting of here like this. Now you can see all the footings are overlapping here. So in that case we will consider uh, pre prefer as raft footing. 
so there are in the raft of footing uh, the loading distribution is also uniform gains case okay depends upon your columns consideration and depends upon the specifications of uh, reinforcement okay so this is the raft of footing and again if the area of the footing uh, sorry if the area of the total area of the sum of the all the columns which is exceeding the footing area we will adopt this method okay let us consider this is the foot uh, foundation is there just i'm taking footing area will be consisting of 400 meter square so if you consider the area of this particular uh, sum of the columns which is approximately of 250 this 250 value will be greater than 50 percentage then we have to adopt this method okay raft footing so these are the examples which is comes under the isolated footing now i will show you the examples which is which is comes under the d foundation so the basic condition which is follow for the uh, shallow uh, not shallow foundation d foundation here the d foundation will be uh, depth of the foundation is greater than uh, width of the foundation this is the condition we have to take okay so the example which is comes under this as pile foundation as well as the well foundation okay so this is the pile foundation uh, diagram so in which it will be consisting of series of the columns which is attached to one single pile cap then after that it will be consisting of your structure here like this so if you want to transfer the load uh, uh, in the proper way we will consider this method so basically this method was adopted pile foundation was adopted if our construction site soil will be consisting of loose condition okay if the soil is consisting of loose condition then obviously it will be having more amount of the deflection value shear value as well as uh, drift value in order to decrease that particular load uh, drift value we will adopt this uh, pile foundation in this pile foundation the piles are drilled uh, up to the mark of high density soil then after that we will uh, construct a piles to that particular high density soil so we will uh, take proper pile cap uh, above the uh, pile foundation then after that we will construct the structure so that the load distribution will be transferred to the hot soil okay this is the pile foundation and the next one is comes under the well foundation basically we, we adopt this well foundation condition system in bridges or any hydraulic structure construction in that case we have to uh, make wells for construction of the foundation in that particular case we will adopt this method okay these are the some examples regarding deep foundation section so now i will explain you the specifications which we need to consider before going to designing of any kind of the foundation okay so firstly the minimum cover value so the minimum cover value for the uh, foundation we have to take it as 50 mm this is the basic uh, specification we have to adopt in the foundation the second one is minimum and maximum reinforcement the minimum reinforcement value which is for the mild steel bars we have to take it as 0.515 times of bd so bd is the cross section area of the footing okay we have to consider and for the hysd bars we have to consider it as 0.12 percentage of bd okay this is the cross section area for the minimum bars the maximum uh, maximum reinforcement for the uh, footing we have to uh, consider should not be exceed 4 percentage this is the most important value we should not be exceed this 4 percentage of the grass cross sectional area for the particular foundation this is the maximum value and minimum edge distance basically let us consider this is the foundation just i am drawing here like this so this is the column which is comes under this so the particular uh, depth which is there this distance we will call it as edge distance okay the thickness of the foundation we will call it as edge distance obviously the edge distance is also called as thickness of the foundation the thickness of the foundation uh, for the soils we have to consider it as 150 mm as the minimum value and greater than uh, 300 mm for the pile foundation if you are constructing uh, the for the soil uh, condition which is nothing but your uh, shallow foundation then we have to consider minimum of 150 mm and for the uh, pile foundation we have to consider greater than uh, 300 mm this is the basic condition the minimum depth of, uh, for the foundation let us consider this is our site let us consider we are uh, extracting a soil for the foundation so this is the width as well as the depth of the foundation again we have to consider the depth of the foundation also this depth we have to calculate individually so for the calculation of the depth of the foundation we have the formula which is nothing but depth of the foundation equals to p naught by gamma into 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi whole square this is the formula we have to consider for calculating the minimum depth of the foundation okay so the minimum depth of the foundation we have to consider in this formula as meters the bearing capacity of the soil is p naught before constructing a, uh, any kind of the construction or designing model we have to consider bearing capacity that is the important factor okay so again gamma is the density of the soil uh, or unit weight of the soil okay so again phi is the unit angle of uh, 
repose of the soil okay we have to calculate this particular value based on the laboratory experiments okay so even this is the node point we have to consider before that so even if the hard soil is present at the ground level uh, then we have to provide the minimum depth as 500 mm this is the basic condition the 500 mm we have to consider if the soil is consisting of hot soil also okay so now i will explain you the minimum reinforcement in the pedestrian okay so the nominal longitudinal reinforcement uh, is not less than 0.5 percentage of the cross sectional dimension area of the shell we have to consider for the pedestrian reinforcement in the foundation now i will explain you the permissible bearing stress the in the limit state method we have to consider 0.5 percentage of fck and of, in the working stress method we have to consider 0.25 percent uh, 25 of uh, fck value as the bearing uh, permissible bearing stress value so depends upon your grade of the concrete the value of the permissible grading uh, permissible bearing stress value will be varying if you are considering m30 grade concrete we have to take 0.45 of m30 grade concrete for the limit state method in the same way we have to consider it for the working stress method also okay now i will explain you the last condition which is comes under the double bars firstly i will explain the double bars then after that i will explain you the uh, minimum requirement okay so let us consider this is the example which is consisting of foundation the bars which is comes under this uh, uh, prolongation is called as double bars now we can see this green color mark indicates your double bars now we can see the bars which are exist above the now we can see these bars are exist above the footing okay now we can see this is the extra distance we have to provide so this is the extra distance we have to consider in order to give the proper loading distribution condition okay these bars are called as double bars internal bars okay extend the longitudinal reinforcement or double of at least 0.5 percentage of cross sectional area of the support column this is the basic condition we have to consider in the double bar condition case okay so this is the basic brief uh, brief explanation regarding the types of the foundation and uh, uh, different conditions we have to consider in the foundation design as well as the specifications which is taken before the designing of the uh, footing sections if you have any queries about this video please try to text me your questions in the below comment box so that i will give you the answer for that question thank you